Welcome to The Physics Connection. This is Salem and today I'm going to talk about this book, Society of Mind. So this is written by Marvin Minsky, one of the early workers on artificial intelligence. He, wore, he was at MIT and he's very, very smart. In this book, every page, there's like an essay like this. And uh, so there's a bunch of these and each one of them is just full of insight. I can just talk about just one of these and every one I read I learn something or uh, you learn a different way for how to think about the world. So what he's trying to do in this book, Society of Mind, means that your brain is not just a single entity. You're not just a single entity. It's, just a, it's not just I. If you want to make a machine that acts like a human, there you have to have a lot of different agents in your brain. There's an agent for talking. When I talk, for example, I'm not just uh, producing the words in one go. There are parts of my brain that are responsible for controlling meaning, for uh, getting things from memory, and uh, generating the word. And then you need to figure out how to send the information to your mouth to move in the right way to generate that sound. So each one of these uh, things is controlled by an agent. This is the main idea in the book. You have a society of agents that are trying to uh, compete with each other and collaborate with each other so that they generate the behavior that you produce. I'm just gonna say like a few things from this book. This is the one thing that I just read recently. So it says touch your ear like this and try to give a description for how this feels like, like that. There's not much you can say. It's just like, it just feels like boop, boop. So it's hard to describe. There's not a lot of things to describe or not a lot of words to say for this feeling. But now, touch your ear twice. One here and one here. Like this. And then touch your nose. Okay? Now the question is, which two were more similar to each other? The two on the ear? or the one on the ear and one on the nose. Probably the two on the ear felt the same. So you can uh, distinguish between this and this and this and that. So the point here is if you have only one thing, only one feeling, you can't, there's not much to say about it, but once you start to compare things, you compare one feeling to another feeling, you start to be able to distinguish them. So the way that you actually produce uh, an understanding of these uh, feelings and emotions and your observations of the world is that you are actually comparing them, uh, you are actually comparing different things that happen in the world. You are uh, comparing different emotions and there's a lot more to say about how to compare things than only what one thing, one single thing feels like. And this is analogous to what we have in math when you describe a single point. There's not much to say about a single point. You would think, oh, it's just like a very, very small object and it's round. But no, a single point has zero size. So it's not just a very, very small thing. Mathematically, it doesn't have a size. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have anything. Not even a position. You can't uh, describe its position because the only way you can describe the single point's position is relative to other points. So once you have other points, you take one point and then another point and compare them and they form a line. And then you take a different line and you see how they intersect and you make planes and surfaces and all that. And building from points, you can get an entire world of geometry. But a point in itself did not have anything that you could describe it as. So that's it for now. Let me know if you want to hear more about this. I really like it and I'm reading it. There's a lot of smart things in the book. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.